Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So it's funny because the first time I wore this wig, I was raging about Amber Heard and in this video, I'm gonna be raging about something else. So maybe we should just call this one the rage wig. Just kidding, every wig of mine is a rage wig. This is gonna be a chaptered video. I'm gonna timestamp every single chapter down below. So if you already know what's going on and you kind of want to skip me summarizing it, you can do that. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna summarize this. I'm then going to go into more details that the media might not have included, like video footage, like proof of certain behaviors, and then I will go into analysis. So that's what you're in for, that's the fucking menu. A YouTuber placed her autistic adopted son from China with a new family after making content with him for years. Micah Stauffer built her YouTube following partly by sharing every step of her journey to adopt a toddler from China. This week, she revealed why he'd gone missing from her videos. A YouTuber with hundreds of thousands of followers who has shared her family's experience of adopting a toddler from China announced on Tuesday that she and her husband had permanently placed their child with another family after unspecified behavioral issues. The announcement has caused a firestorm on social media and within the creator and influencer communities. Many are questioning the ethics of the YouTuber Micah Stauffer after she spent years sharing intimate details of her son Huxley's life on a monetized channel. Even before her family adopted Huxley in 2017, Micah had made his story a key theme on her channel, which has exploded in popularity and landed her several high-profile sponsorships. She has also positioned herself as an advocate for international adoption at several national news outlets. These facts, coupled with long-simmering debate about the rights of children on social media has led to an outcry against the couple and the decision to publicize and monetize their lives. I'm gonna pause here for a second. So the channel is under Micah Stauffer's name. That channel has about 700,000 subscribers. Understandably, she's lost quite a few since they put out their video saying that they rehomed their child. They also have a family channel. I don't think there's anything on it as of right now. Can we just stop a second and acknowledge, like this is something that might seem petty and stupid. There are two parents here. There's Micah and then there's James. So like, I know that everyone here is like screaming about Micah, but it's like, I would want to scream about them both. In parenthood, it should be 50-50. Now, of course, they're gonna be off days where someone's 80 and the other one's 20. But the bottom line is you're both parents and you're both making the decision. So as much as I I don't like Micah's decisions. I also don't like James. So I think it's important to remember that there are two people here that are on the receiving end of the heat, or that should be anyway. The couple's attorneys, Thomas Teneff and Taylor Sayers, said in a statement to BuzzFeed News that Huxley had not been placed in the foster system, but rather they had decided to, quote, hand select a family who is equipped to handle Huxley's needs. We are privy to this case, and given the facts at hand, we feel this was the best decision for Huxley, the attorneys said in their statement. In coming to know our clients, we know they are a loving family and very caring parents that would do anything for their children. Since his adoption, they consulted with multiple professionals in the healthcare and educational arenas in order to provide Huxley with the best possible treatment and care. Over time, the team of medical professional advised our clients it might be best for Huxley to be placed with another family. This is devastating news for any parent. I want to just say, remember this part about the medical professionals because I have some video footage that goes a little bit against this narrative, but okay. Mike and her husband, James, who live in Ohio, have been sharing their life on YouTube since 2014. Micah's channel has 717,000 subscribers. Last I checked, it was actually 710,000. And the family's channel, The Stauffer Life, has 332,000. When the couple started vlogging, they had one daughter together and Micah had a daughter from a previous relationship. They have since had two sons together, whose pregnancy and birth they also shared on their channel. In July 2016, the couple posted a video titled Big Announcement Baby Number 4. In the video, they announced that they were aiming to adopt a little boy from China. They added they were even considering adopting another child from, quote, Uganda or Ethiopia once this adoption went through. So I also want you to keep in mind China, Uganda, and Ethiopia. They are all important things that I will refer to later. Micah produced 27 videos about their adoption journey, including a 13-part series of adoption updates. In the series, Micah answered questions about the process of adopting from China and the emotions she felt. In some videos, Micah plugged a fundraiser she had organized for Huxley's unspecified needs. She said every person who donated $5 would unlock a different piece of a thousand-piece puzzle, which would at the end be a photo of Huxley that she would reveal to the world. She also said she would write the names of all the donors in his baby book. In a sponsored video from 2017, Micah said she was using her proceeds from YouTube ads towards her adoption, writing in the caption that the sponsorship profits are going towards bringing our son home from China. In an article she wrote for Parade, Micah said the Stoffers were told by the agency Huxley had a brain tumor and brain damage. She wrote that at first the couple 
weren't open to a special needs adoption. To be noted, I'm reading the article as it is written. So the term special needs, I've read a euphemism that isn't super appreciated. So just a note. But as we let the idea soak in, God has softened our hearts, she wrote. Before we knew it, we were open to almost every special needs in the book. In October, 2017, Micah posted a compilation video titled Huxley's Emotional Adoption Video, Gotcha Day, China Adoption, that she dedicated to all the orphans around the world. It featured videos of Huxley before his adoption, as well as a video of the family traveling to China and meeting him for the first time. Huxley was two and a half years old at the time. This video was a huge hit for Micah's channel and has been viewed more than 5.5 million times. Then on Tuesday night, the Stoffers posted a video called An Update on Our Family. They had removed Huxley from their home and placed him with another family, they said. The couple said the decision was made for Huxley's emotional well-being. James said Huxley had several special needs that they weren't aware of until he came home to the U.S. They had placed him in intense therapy over the past year, he said said and consulted experts. That's basically the gist. So there were several things that came off as warnings to me. Now, obviously this is hindsight because I didn't know this was gonna happen before it happened. I didn't know they were gonna give up their child. But when you look back on certain parts of their content, there are certain things that would make you raise your eyebrow, to say the least. One of the things that was noted was that, and all screenshots are alleged, okay? So allegedly. There are screenshots from uh, Facebook where Micah was asking questions about adoption and other things. So let's just look at those screenshots and you can make up your mind on whether these things sound normal to you or not. So there is one screenshot that says, we are on the journey to adopt and we are hoping to bring home two little boys with special focus. I can't wait to see what the Lord has planned for our family. We are very open to a bunch of different special focuses. God is good. Now I looked into what exactly special focus refers to because at first I was like, is this a weird terminology for children? children with a disability. Based on a website I found, it says that the CWC, which stands for China Waiting Child Special Focus Program, is a program designed to assist children whose files have been on the online CWC list for over two months. That's one part of it. But it also says, as long as at least one of the children is designated as special focus child, families who are eligible to adopt from China are permitted to adopt two children within one year, either simultaneously or successively. So when Micah was asking about the special focus program, it seems to me that part of it was so that they could adopt either two children together or close to each other rather than have to wait years for them to be apart, which in and of itself is not inherently wrong, but it becomes suspicious as time goes on, just something noted. So it isn't clear to me whether special focus children have any disability or if it really just is because of the time they've been on the database. I just wonder about the terminology special focus because in a way I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because we're focusing on someone who's been on the website for longer, you know, to you make sure that they find their family. But special focus could also seem to refer to disability because like we now know, she did adopt a child, Huxley, who has autism amongst potentially other things, though that's a little up in the air in and of itself. Another Facebook post that Micah put on the China adoption questions read, we we're praying about adopting again and my husband wanted me to ask what special needs would you consider minor or relatively easy to manage that most people wouldn't consider easy. While I understand that the sentiment of this question could be benevolent, it also kind of just reminds me of like someone talking about pets kind of like when you get snakes and you ask someone, hey, what's like a good beginner type of snake? And people will say ball python or corn snake. It kind of feels like this is an equivalent, which is weird to think about with a human. Asking on the China adoption questions page, sure, but you're really gonna be getting anecdotal information. Like I feel like this would be a question you'd ask a medical professional to just ask what the difference is between multiple disabilities and then you can see what you can handle and what you as a parent are prepared to do and you know like what's within your means. It could be benevolent I guess, I just find it strange. Remember how what I read said that over time the team of medical professional advised our clients it might be best for Huxley to be placed with another family. Interesting because there's this video that was posted before officially picking up Huxley so this is when the adoption process was still ongoing and Micah was talking 
talking to medical professionals about the diagnoses and prognoses that Huxley was getting, because apart from the autism, she was getting conflicting information about what disabilities he officially confirmed did have. The neurologist and the physicians in China, they're very confident in the diagnosis that they gave us. And we were 100% confident and we were 100% prepared for that diagnosis. We prepared the good, the bad, you know, just really preparing for all of, you know, everything that it could encompass. And we sent off our imaging to our physician that's kind of been on, vo on board with Huxley. She's been reviewing the file. She's been very optimistic about this little boy. She's like, I don't see anything wrong with him. He looks perfect to me. And then when she got the imaging, her optimism went down significantly. She, and it's nothing against this physician, you know, she's just listening to what other doctors, other neurosurgeons and um, neurodevelopment specialists are telling her. But um, her prognosis and everything for our son just went drastic. She kind of almost discouraged us from adopting him, like saying that this is going to be severe, this is going to be a lot, you know, we don't know what unknown elements could be. Um, and for us, it was hard. It was hard to hear somebody say that, but for me, more than anything, I go from one diagnosis to a totally different diagnosis. But immediately when she gave me another diagnosis, I looked at the bright side. I was like, you know, that could be awesome. There could be so many good things about that second diagnosis. and. We asked for a couple more videos from um, the foster mama that is taking care of our little boy right now. And she provided them. And if anything, my child is not returnable. I So when I heard all of the things that that doctor was telling us, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. I wasn't in a state of denial. I accepted and took on everything that she said. And I sat down with Jim, I said, you know, worst case situation, if our little boy at one point in his life, he needed to be in a wheelchair and he needed full on care, would you still love him? And we, without a doubt in our minds, we knew no matter what state he came to us that we would love him. Using the term in one ear, out the other, right before saying, oh, but I wasn't in denial. It's a bad choice of words to use in one ear, out the other, if you really want to say that you considered something and that you truly evaluated it to every single extent that you can, especially because we are talking about a child here. You're not just buying a fucking teapot. From this clip, in my opinion, it seems like disability wasn't taken seriously. And that's not me saying, don't ever adopt a child with disabilities. What I am saying is, don't treat them like quirks, like personality quirks, like give them the right amount of respect where you really need to think about, how does this disability affect them? How does it affect you in the sense of, can you provide everything they need emotionally, financially, and what other, other support system they need? Are you prepared to? Do you feel like it's within your realm of capabilities? Because for some people it's not, and that's fine, but you need to address that. And on top of that, not only you in terms of Micah, but also the husband, because again, they're both the parents. So it's a question of, as a team, can you do what you need to do? I don't know how seriously they took what they were being told, especially when the medical professionals themselves said that it was severe or that things could get worse. And that's with any child with disabilities or without. Things can happen that you will not predict. And ideally, when you have a child or when you adopt a child, you're signing up to take care of them no matter what. So then once they did get Huxley and Huxley was officially living with them, there was a video and I'm gonna just show you a screenshot because I don't wanna show Huxley's face or any of the children's faces. You could see that there was duct tape put on his hand because apparently there was an issue with him sucking his thumb. There's also proof that other children within the family were sucking their thumbs and they didn't have duct tape. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I don't know if maybe off camera, even the other children had duct tape on their hands as a solution to sucking on their thumbs. But to me, that seemed extremely, extremely suspicious. So first of all, I 
think that Huxley was a very strategic decision. Now, this might be me being cynical. I don't know how to be anything else. So, so I think Huxley was treated as a product by them. They chose a child that was from China, which inherently, is there a problem with that? Absolutely not. But going back to the article, remember how they also said they wanted to also adopt a child from Ethiopia or Uganda? To me, it's a little bit suspicious when people have a very particular fixation with adopting a child from elsewhere, specifically when that child will stand out in the sense of all her other children are white or white passing as far as I know, and Huxley would stand out as different, which isn't a bad thing normally. But if your sole reason for adopting a child from a specific country is so that you can turn that into a selling point for your channel, then you're fetishizing the fact that you have a Chinese child. So it has nothing really to do with the well-being of the child as much as this will be new and different for my channel. Aside from that, I also think that there's the commodification of disability because in the trajectory, the journey that we have from before Huxley gets to their home to when Huxley arrives and the subsequent years he was with the family, disability is something that had to be talked about because of course disability is part of not only Huxley's life, but by proxy, the family's life, right? All of this was monetized. And frankly, I'm not for family bloggers at all. I think it's, it just, I don't feel good about family bloggers. So showing children at any level really online, if they're the focus of all of your videos and they're there's a camera always shoved in their face. I'm not okay with that, but I truly feel like this child was seen as a product that was new and different, and aside from commodifying the fact that Huxley had disabilities and that Huxley was Chinese, because a big part of their like adoption journey was that since this child was from China, obviously the steps are different. Obviously they had to travel far to even go see him. So like there are all these things that make adopting Huxley a moneymaker in the sense of, oh, this is so different because this is a child from China. And I'm assuming that's also what they would be going for if they adopted a child from Uganda or Ethiopia. Again, it would be a child that doesn't look at all like any of their other children, which is what they're banking on. So I'm sorry if this sounds terrible, but to me, all seems like the thought process behind this to me seems all about monetization, all about commodifying the child's personhood, going from their race to their disabilities. So I also wanna say that in this same vein of commodification, it's also the fact that Huxley was monetized before he even entered the house, before we even saw what he looked like. Plenty of people followed this channel specifically because they were interested in Huxley and his, you know, trajectory with the family. From the beginning, they got people's investment, and I think that once they saw how invested people were getting, they were seeing dollar signs. As for the savior complex, now obviously I'm not a psychologist, so this is just me as a layperson saying anything. I think there was a savior complex on Micah's side for sure. I don't know about the husband because on our channel there aren't really videos of her husband sitting down sharing everything like she does. But to me it seemed like when the medical professionals gave her the diagnoses and when the medical professionals were like, hey, this could actually be like difficult for you to manage or this could be, you know, above your ability to take care of, she kind of just brushed it off. And that to me is not because she had fully considered it and was aware and was ready. To me, it was more like, first of all, dollar signs. But second of all, it's like almost a disregard, almost like you feel like you can quote unquote fix. And I'm not saying the child needs fixing, but that's what I think was going on in her head from an outside perspective was that like these disabilities were all just going to be fine on a walk in the park. And that's also what made me uncomfortable because it seemed like in a way the disabilities were commodified and in another way they were also undermined at the same time, which is a weird kind of uh, tension between those two things. In certain situations, I can see why people would have to give up a child. I've come up with scenarios, specific ones in my head, where I can see a child needing to be given up, which is tragic and horrible and, and traumatic. That being said, I think this whole case reeks of irresponsibility in the sense of from the very beginning, I don't really think due diligence was done here. I don't think things were taken seriously like I've voiced before. And I think that 
the idea of having a new and different child to their channel was really the selling point. And I was thinking about this before, and I was thinking, if they didn't have a family channel, would they have adopted Huxley? Potentially, maybe. Do I think so? No, I don't think Huxley would have been in the image at all if there weren't a channel and if there weren't a chance to make money off of him. So the whole thing of them not wanting a disabled child, but then God softened their hearts, that to me was a bit of a red flag too, because I was wondering how long did you really think about, you know, suddenly being okay with it? Because it's a pretty harsh division and a stance to be like, no, we don't want a disabled child to, yes, we're fine with any disability ever, because it seems like a very abrupt choice to make. And like I said before, there's nothing wrong with adopting a disabled child, but be careful about saying yes to that if you're not prepared to do everything you need to do, which they weren't. It's just, this was a responsibility the whole time, in my opinion. I'm frankly glad that their child is not with them anymore because I think Huxley deserves a better family, honestly, a family that can take care of him to the fullest extent. So I'm happy that Huxley is away from them. I'm just sad that Huxley had to have anything to do with them in the first place. So that's my opinion on that. Let me know what you guys think. Where do you stand? Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to my patrons as always and I'll catch you guys next time.